Howdy everyone, it's Sam. Welcome back to Wobble Enjoy Sports. If you're new around here, hope I can get you to consider to like the content and subscribe to the channel. But if you are a regular around these here parts, thank you very much for the continuous support. Last weekend, I got myself five correct tips out of a possible eight. Uh, one of them not being my North Queensland Cowboys who got brought back down to reality massively, but I'm blaming it on the rain like Millie Vanilli did back in the early 90s. Let's get stuck into round five of the 2024 NRL season. Round five of the 2024 NRL season starts on Thursday night from Amy Park in Melbourne. The Storm host the Brisbane Broncos. This will be the 56th match between the two. Melbourne command the Broncos at 40 to 14 with one draw thrown in there as well. That is the overall head-to-head -head record. On Sportsbet, the Storm are $1.55. The Brisbane Broncos are $2.46. Brisbane have not defeated Melbourne in Melbourne since the year 2016. They've only won three games in their history down at Amy Park. Let's get stuck into the team lists. For the first time in 2024, we're going to see Cameron Munster pop on the purple jersey. Cameron Munster's back in at the 5'8th position and so is his halves partner, Jerome Hughes, in at, in at the halfback position after suffering a suspension. And Christian Welch is back after copping a concussion uh, the other week as well. For the Brisbane Broncos uh, going through it, their back line, their forward pack looks to be unchanged. Uh, but the interchange reads smoothie, Ben Takura. I believe that's one of the two skyscrapers that the Brisbane Broncos have floating around that could be anything um, in the not too distant future. So this young Takura uh, is in a Jersey 15 with Kobe Hetherington and Corey Oates in there as well. I really hate to say it, yet North Queensland offered nothing last Friday night, unfortunately. Again, very wet track. But when the Broncos were completing at above 80% and the Cowboys finished the game in the mid-50s for completion rates, Brisbane Broncos were never really headed, were they? Um, they're going to have a lot more stiffer competition, though. They are coming up against their bogey side. They do, the Storm, have massive inclusions. Cameron Munster, though, the question is, how is his rust going to go? Um, is he going to hit the ground running? Or is it going to take a little bit uh, of time to really get back into the swing of things in the week-to-week -week footy? Um, I'm going to go the Melbourne Storm to win this game 1-12, to not 13+. plus. On Friday Night Footy, there are two games. Game number one emanates from Accor Stadium. The Bulldogs host the Sydney Roosters. Easts are $1.30. Canterbury Bankstown are $3.54. This will be the 180th edition of the Bulldogs and the Roosters. And it is the Bulldogs who lead 93 to 81 with five draws in there. The past three games between these two clubs, regardless of where the Bulldogs have actually ended up on the ladder, the past three games between these two have been decided by six points or less. So the Bulldogs, just in really recent times, have been a pain in the ass for the Sydney Roosters over the past couple of seasons. Easts, they last defeated Canterbury at Accor Stadium in the year 2019. Canterbury, they last defeated the Roosters in 2022 at Sydney Olympic Park. So there's something there to overcome for the Sydney Roosters to get over the top of the Canterbury Bankstown Bulldogs. Let's get stuck into the team list. For the home side, the Bulldogs, Blake Wilson comes in for Josh Shadokar, who unfortunately suffered a concussion in the Good Friday loss against South Sydney the week before. In the Ford pack, Sam Hughes starts with jersey number 10 on his back. Curran, Kickout, and Salmon are the starting back row with Curran being on the edge. Uh, that is being that Jacob Preston suffered a fractured jaw and he's going to be out for at least three weeks. Going into the interchange now, we've got Kurt Mann, Harrison Edwards, he was a young man that debuted last season, Liam Knight in 16, and a young man who will debut in this game, 
and impressed in the trials Kitione Kautoga, uh, a Fijian representative or, or soon to be representative, uh, I believe. So that's great news. And then you've got young Toby Sexton and Bronson Sherry floating around there in the reserves. And then looking over into the Sydney Roosters now, Luke Keery and Walker are the halves combination with the rest of the back line uh, being unchanged. The forward pack, Nat Butcher starts in the second row in jersey number 11. Angus Crichton, the other second rower to start, and Victor Radley. Uh, Lindsay Collins returns from an injury, so that's a big boost to the Sydney Roosters. And the interchange reads Watson, White, Satili Tupanua, and Terrell May with Michael Jennings in a jersey number 18. Again, Siwa Wong as well uh, is on the reserves list too. The Bulldogs, it is their attack that is going to be their Achilles heel this year, unfortunately. I thought they could have been starting to turn a corner against the Gold Coast Titans, but sorry Titans fans, that was against you guys. Um, I think the Dogs will be in it for the first for the first half of the first half, but this this is um I, I think this is gonna be a 13 plus points win to the Sydney Roosters at Core Stadium this Friday night. And the primetime Friday night football game on Channel 9 is from Newcastle. The Knights host the Dragons. On Sportsbet, the Knights are $1.43. The Dragons are $2.83. This will be the 44th match between the two clubs. And it is the Dragons who lead it 29 to 14 in favour of the St. George Illawarra Dragons. This is the Dragons' first trip to McDonald Jones Stadium since 2021, and they won on that occasion. The Knights have not defeated the Dragons on home soil since the year 2020. As a matter of fact, since 2020, there have been four games, and at the moment it's split at two, two, wins, two wins apiece. For the Newcastle Knights, it is all about the halves watching as I go through it. Now, Dane Gagai, before that, though, does return. So that's a huge inclusion for the Newcastle Knights. They missed him last weekend, albeit I thought the Knights had their best effort, their best performance of 2024 to date, even though they lost that game against the Warriors over in New Zealand. And just a shout out to Anari Tuala. I think that may have been his best first grade game to date. So congratulations to him. Uh, it's Jack Cogger and Jackson Hastings who's going to be in the halves this Friday night. So Hastings, after having a week or two away from the spotlight, the limelight, uh, he's going to be back into the halfback position. And it is uh, obviously Tyson Gamble, who is just completely omitted from the 1 to 17. So it is Cogger and Hastings on Friday night. For the forward pack now, Saifidi, Jacob Saifidi that is, Jaden Braley starts in the hooker position, and Phoenix Crossland has, I guess, been demoted uh, to Jersey 14. And then Leo Thompson returns from a one-game suspension. Frizzell, Pierce Paul, and Elliot are the back row. Affle mentioned Crossland is 14. The rest of the interchange is Daniel Saifidi, Jack Hetherington, and Matt Croker. Going into the Dragons now, who are just going to be a very plucky team all season long. And it's going to spark a little bit more fire underneath the arse of this man, Zach Lomax. Approximately two hours ago, Zach Lomax uh, and his team and the Dragons, they came out and said this is his final year with the Red V. Where Lomax will go in 2025, odds are Parramatta but who friggin' knows at this stage. So Lomax could be in for a huge year, or it could be, it could prove to be too much. Uh, so we'll see how, how that rolls out, but he's been good this year. So looking into the team list for uh, the St. George Illawarra Dragons, the back line looks to be unchanged. Jack DeBillin starts in jersey 10 again. Tom Eisenhuth in at the lock position. And the interchange reads, Jesse Marshke, Blake Laurie starts in 15, Michael Molo and Raymond Faitala Ramarina in jersey 17, with Hame Sele uh, in jersey number 18. The Dragons are a bogey side of the Newcastle Knights. The head-to-head -head record does suggest that. However, these two sides did meet, I think it was the last round of last year. Uh, and Dominic Young went insane. Obviously, D Dominic Young is not there. Uh, but the Knights did get the big dub over the Dragons on that occasion. Um, the Knights, if they lose this game, it well and truly is panic stations and coach Adam O'Brien can't do any more swapping and changing really uh, because he's gone through all the halves combinations and now Jaden Braley is starting for Phoenix Crossland and maybe that was just going to be a natural progression of things but um, he's still trying to tinker with things and obviously you do not want to go too far deep into the season and you're still tinkering around with it all. However, coming off a short turnaround, they, they played on the Sunday, they're playing on the Friday night. 
It is a short turnaround for the Newcastle Knights, but they did put in their best effort, and that makes me think that they want to, they're, they're chomping at the bit to um, back that effort up in front of their home fans. I think it will be a close game, though. I think the Knights will win this game 1 to 12. Now we're into Super Saturday, and game number one is from a poor stadium. The South Sydney Rabbitohs host the New Zealand Warriors. The Warriors are coming in as the favourites at $1.81. The Rabbitohs are $2 for outsiders. This will be the 41st match between the two clubs, and at South Sydney you have a slender lead at 21 to 19. There is a lot to talk about within this game. This is the first time that these two clubs have played each other at a core stadium since the year 2017. But they have the Warriors. They have not defeated the Rabbitohs at the venue since the year 2011. As a matter of fact, this is only going to be their third match at Sydney Olympic Park for the Warriors since the year 2020. And they've actually won two games in a row, technically. Both against the Bulldogs but they're on a two-game win streak at Sydney Olympic Park, are the New Zealand Warriors. South Sydney, they have won eight in a row against the New Zealand Warriors, dating back to the year 2018. And six of the past eight games between these two have been decided by 13 plus. Uh, so it is domination, South Sydney over the Warriors, which has given them that slender overall head-to-head -head record uh, with the Warriors dominating in the early 2000s sort of thing. But um, yeah, it has come back in, and there's a bit of history to rewrite now. There's, it's a, it's a bit of a new matchup at a course stadium this Saturday, and it is shaping up as one of the more important, fascinating contests of the round. So going into South Sydney, we got Isaac Thompson, who is in for Alex Johnston, who unfortunately uh, has done his hamstring. Looks like he's going to miss six weeks, uh, unfortunately for AJ. Uh, Isaiah Tass and Tane Milne and Jack White and round out the, the back line with obviously Latrell Mitchell at fullback. Cody Walker and Dean Hawkins remains at the halfback position. And then the forward pack is unchanged. The interchange reads Cheekham, Duncan, Kepi and Davey Mowali. Now for the New Zealand Warriors, Charles Nickel Klukstar reads turns for the New Zealand Warriors and he's playing in the fullback position. Therefore, Roger Tuovasashek, who went berserk this past Sunday. He is going to be playing back in the centres. Tamare Martin has his first game for 2024. I'm pretty sure about that because unfortunately Luke Metcalf looks to, his, looks to have broken his leg, unfortunately. So a quick recovery to you, young man. The forward pack now for the New Zealand Warriors. It looks to be unchanged. Murata Niakure starting in jersey number 12. The interchange reads Freddie Lusick, Tom Arley, Bunty Afoa, and Jazz Tavanga. Uh, so Chanel harris Tavita has been uh, popped into the reserves on this occasion uh, after having a pretty good outing uh, the week before. Uh, and Dylan Walker is still, um, still out with an injury. Uh, so the New Zealand Warriors, man, they're still not playing in their highest year, are they? They're not playing at their best, but they're still playing consistently well, just not at their best. Meanwhile, South Sydney, uh, there was a period there against the Bulldogs where you would suggest that that was their best defensive effort for 2024 to date. Um, maybe we've all been a little bit too harsh on South Sydney. Maybe. Uh, they've got a couple of new faces, a lot of injuries as well that they've needed to overcome. Maybe last week against the Bulldogs, there was just that little sign that maybe it's just starting to click into gear, especially for Jack Whiten as well, who's just proving to be a little bit of a difference uh, for the South Sydney Rabbitohs. So I'm going to tip the New Zealand Warriors. I don't think it'll be 13 plus. Uh, the Warriors, I think this is their first game in Sydney for 2024. It is a rare trip to Sydney Olympic Park. They did only play there last year, but again, this is only their third game or fourth game in about six years or so at the venue. But I'm going to go the New Zealand Warriors to win this game 1-12, to but a lot of it sort of rides on how rusty or unrusty Chance Nickel Klukstar will be for the Warriors at fullback. Oh, and by the way, Roger Tuovasashek, 200th first grade game this weekend too, so they'll get up for it. Warriors 1-12. to the second game on Super Saturday is from Four Pines Park, Manly versus Penrith. This will be the 96th match between the two, and it is Manly who still lead it at 52 to 42 with a draw thrown in there as well. On Sportsbet, it is the Panthers who are $1.61 favourites. Manly are $2.34. 
Penrith, they have won eight in a row against Manly that dates back to the year 2018. The first half of 2018, Manly did defeat Penrith. So last time Manly defeated Penrith was in the first half of 2018. However, Manly have not defeated the Panthers at Brookvale or Four Pines Park since the year 2017. A massive occasion for DCE this weekend. He becomes the most capped Manly Baringa Sea Eagle of all time uh, in at 310 games. So that is an occasion that they're all going to get up for. No wonder it's going to be sold out this weekend too. So let's go into the team list now. Uh, and it looks like the back line for the Seagulls is unchanged. Talao and Polo are still the wingers. Uh, the Ford pack now, it looks unchanged as well. And the interchange reads Lawton, Waddell, Topofoa, Sipley and Nathan Brown. Going into the Penrith Panthers now and their back line looks to be unchanged with Brad Schneider remaining at halfback. The Ford pack James Fisher-Harris. James Fisher-Harris is back in jersey number 10. And so too is... No, oh, I thought Liam Martin was going to miss out this week with uh, a shoulder complaint. But Liam Martin's been named. The interchange reads Laurie, Smith, Liam Henry and Matt Eisenhuth. So Maverick Geyer does revert back to the reserves list. But James Fisher-Harris is back for the Penrith Panthers my goodness. Uh, Manly were absolutely diabolical. I know I'm not really in a position to say too much or badmouth another team after what these boys did on Friday night, but they were absolutely diabolical in their own right. Manly Seagulls and then the Penrith Panthers, man. Uh, I tipped Penrith. A lot of people went Easts uh, and they just showed their class in the end. The Panthers and Dylan Edwards just turned it on. Absolutely turned it on. I'm going to go the Penrith Panthers to win this game 1-12, not 13+. plus. I do think that Manly will find a way to get up and get close. And the final game on Super Saturday is from Suncorp Stadium. The Dolphins versus the Tigers. The Dolphins are $1.66 favourites. The Tigers are $2.23. This will be just the second of a match between the two. And the Tigers won that battle last year at Combank Stadium. Therefore, this will be the first ever meeting between these two clubs at Suncorp Stadium. Going into the team list now, uh, for the uh, Redcliffe Dolphins, Nick Arima is in a 5'8 position. Other than that, the back line remains unchanged. The forward pack now uh, looks to be unchanged. And the interchange reads Kerr, Donahue, Nichols and Kenny Bromwich. Now, shifting into the West Tigers, uh, the back line... The only change there is that young Lockie Galvin got himself suspended for two weeks and that now takes him out of the running for Rookie of the Year. My goodness, that is a bugger. So, Jaden Sullivan, second chance, mate. You're in the 5'8 position with Aiden Caesar at the halfback. The forward pack now is unchanged and the interchange... Whoa! Latu Finer. Latu Finer. Latu Finer in a jersey 14. I don't think he's cracked 20 years of age yet. If he has, I'm sorry. But young man gets his debut at Suncorp against the Dolphins, against Wayne Bennett sort of thing. Alex Safarth, Alex Tawal uh, returns to the side. And Samuela, Samuela Fainu returns in jersey number 17 as well. Uh, holy mackerel. Latu Fainu uh, is already putting the pressure on Jaden Sullivan. Uh, this weekend. The defense of the Tigers, man, the past two weeks has been sensational. Uh, the Eels, though, they, they were very, very, very clunky. They weren't bad, per se, but they were clunky without Mitch Moses, man. And the Dolphins, they had the bye, and it took them a good 15, 20 minutes to warm up into the game against the Titans after going down 10 points to nil early on. But when it clicked, it clicked for the Dolphins. And the other thing to take note, too, is the Tigers... They seem to grow another leg whenever they play at Suncorp. Like, I, I fair and can think that the past eight games in a row or something like that, they've either won or they've upset the Brisbane Broncos or they've gone extremely close to causing a boil over. The Tigers seem to go really well and find a different level whenever they play in Brisbane at Suncorp Stadium. Um, I'm going to tip the Dolphins 1-12, to but boy howdy, could you imagine if the friggin' Tigers get this one? 
And then we move into Sunday afternoon footy and game number one emanates from Queensland Country Bank Stadium. The North Queensland Cowboys host the Gold Coast Titans. On Sportsbet, the Cowboys are $1.16. The Titans are $5.30. This will be the 32nd match between the two clubs and the Cowboys have the head-to-head -head record at 19 to 12. Since, uh, well, since 2020, the Titans have played at the venue on four occasions and they are one and three at Queensland Country Bank Stadium. Uh, since 2020 as well, speaking of, these two sides have met eight times and they cannot split each other. It's four wins apiece uh, between the Cowboys and the Titans. Before we get into the team list news, massive congratulations and a huge milestone this weekend for Jake Granville. He played his 200th first grade game last year. He plays his 200th first grade game for the North Queensland Cowboys this Sunday against the Gold Coast Titans. Um, one of the three remaining 2015 Premiership winners, an absolute stalwart, still shows the young men how to friggin' tackle. And some people say that he's well past it, and I can understand that train of thought, that's their opinion. But sometimes Jake Granville just comes on and he does make a difference with his hard hitting attitude, no bullshit um, approach. And I just, you know, I'm just forever thankful and always backing. Jake Granville, so huge occasion for Jake Granville this Sunday. Going into the team list now, and the back line is unchanged. Shame that Tom Dearden can't be in the top 10 or 12 for the Dally M list at the moment. He can't even get himself eight points to crack the top 10. The bloke in my mind is already sitting on 10 Dally M points just quietly, such as his year. And I think he is the five, the form 5 eighth of the competition so far. The forward pack now for uh, the North Queensland Cowboys is also unchanged with Finifuiaki and Nene uh, in the second row. And then on the interchange, we've got Granville, Neem, McIntyre, and Jack Kajewski in a Jersey 17. To be honest with you, I'm surprised to see Jack Kajewski still there in Jersey 17 since last weekend, about 48 hours before kickoff, he requested an immediate release on compassionate grounds uh, to the Brisbane Broncos. So I would have suggested maybe bringing in a Thomas McKayley, but Todd Payton. Going into the Gold Coast Titans now, and let me say, if you are watching Mr. BKR Sport, or if you're watching any Gold Coast Titans fan, we took you mob on way too lightly last year. The match against the Titans last year at Seabus Super Stadium, a game which I attended, we took you guys way too lightly. We rocked up thinking it was just going to happen and it friggin' didn't. Boy, howdy, that sucked. Um, and, it, and it derailed us, man. Valentine Holmes also got himself uh, sent to the sin bin, or I think he did get sent off, and um, he missed the rest of the year because of it. So I'm not taking you guys lightly, absolutely, uh, regardless of what's happened this year so far. Going into the team list now, there are changes. Jaden Campbell is in fullback with Harley Smith Shields uh, playing on the wing uh, with Alafiana Camperera missing out on the 1-17. to Don't know if he's been dropped. I don't know if it's an injury. Brian Kelly, AJ Brimson and Jojo Fafita are on the wing. So Philip Sami succumbing to an injury, I suspect, uh, because of that hip drop tackle Max Plath did on him last weekend. Kieran Foran and Tanner Board remain as the halves combination. That's that that tightrope, I'm I'm sorry, that's gotta be thinning out. That's gotta be thinning out big time, man. Uh, so going into the Ford pack now, we've got Fodder Waker, Randall and Jolliffe, Haas, Khalees Haas, Bo Fermor and Aaron Clark. And then the interchange reads Ferrells, Fafita, Simpson, and a debutant in jersey number 17, Josiah Pahulu in Jersey 17. I think I've heard a couple of good things about this young man, and I'm just desperately trying to think about if he impressed in the trials or not. I can't quite remember, but congratulations to you, young man. That's awesome stuff. Um, so yes, I can see that Mr. Khan Pereira has been dropped, uh, and he's gonna be uh, on the reserves in number uh, 21. We saw what happened with the Titans last weekend. The Dolphins, they started slow. The Cowboys have been starting slow. The Titans, if things can click, they can score points. Um, but they've lost, even though Jojo Fafita comes in, they've lost a tremendous amount of speed. 
I think David Fafita did make a difference. He can't do it all himself, but I think he did make a difference when he came onto the paddock when the momentum did start to shift and it just stagnated a bit when he did come on. And uh, I mean stagnated like the momentum for the Dolphins did start to halt when David Fafita did come on. At least that's from what uh, I remember anyway. Cowboys though, um, that was that was desperately disappointing. And hey, Valentine Holmes said that the boys haven't been good all year. Every one of them, including Todd Payton, said it was not a good performance at all. And I have no guilt. I, I don't feel bad for coming out and only agreeing with them. Uh, it was uh, such a poor performance. And I know the rain was absolutely teeming down, but strike me pink, man. Um, yeah, it was really, really disappointing, man. Especially primetime Good Friday night footy. Can we please not ever play on Good Friday night footy again, by the way? That's two years in a row where we've embarrassed ourselves. But hey, the Cowboys, that's the reality check that they needed, probably wanted as well. And they're going to come out and give the Gold Coast Titans a huge hiding. But still, don't take them lightly. Absolutely laser focus in on the Titans this weekend, boys. And um, you'll come out on top. Cowboys, 13 plus. And the final game of round number five should be a pretty good game. The Raiders take on the Parramatta Eels down at GIO Stadium. On Sportsbet, the Raiders are $1.72. The Eels are $2.13. This will be the 65th. 65th match between the Raiders and the Eels, and the Raiders lead 33-31 to in the overall head-to-head -head record. Since 2020, Parramatta have won four of the past six matches against the Canberra Raiders, so they have won at GIO Stadium very recently. However, it was the Raiders who won the most previous encounter last year, about this time last year. Going into the team list now for the Canberra Raiders, and... Boy, howdy, they started like a house on fire for the first 20 minutes and then fell into a heap in that final 60 minutes. Uh, going into the team list for the Raiders now, uh, the back line is unchanged. I thought there was a threat coming, that that was all going to be edited, but none forthcoming. Going into the forward pack now, there is a uh, swift change. So Adam Mariotta, uh, I think maybe out of necessity, is starting on the second row because Elliot Whitehead has done his calf. And you've got Zach Hosking, who has, I think he's going to be sitting out with a concussion and a couple of stitches in the back of his head. Interchange now is Starling, Horsbra, Simi Sasangi, and Pasami Solo in jersey number 17. And going into the Parramatta Eels lineup now, and that's unchanged. Their back line, their forward pack uh, is unchanged. Jamin Hopgood is starting in jersey 13, though, and he was huge when he came off from the bench. Uh, was hop good. Interchange reads Moretti, Wirimu Greg, Joe Wafahengawi and Kelma Tuolangi with Brennan Hands and Morgan Harper uh, being the omission there. Uh, so actually, yes, I'm sorry, Bailey Simonson uh, comes into the centre for Morgan Harper um, and Simonson taking on his old club down in his old uh, stomping grounds as well this Sunday. Yeah, this um, is a very, very difficult game to tip. Um, I am going to go the Canberra Raiders, however, I think sort of like the bounce back factor with the North Queensland Cowboys, at least I'm hoping anyway, uh, that the Raiders uh, will come out firing. Um, but I think this will be close. Uh, the Eels, man, boy howdy, they certainly did miss Mitch Moses. And uh, look, I don't blame Blaze Talungi at all because uh, I think his inside man, Dylan Brown, had not a good game. I don't think he had a good game uh, almost at all, to be perfectly honest with you. And much like... For 2022, uh, sorry, 2023, I should say, 2023, if it's not Clint Gutherson, the Parramatta Eagles, man, there's just, uh, if it's not Clint Gutherson or Junior Polo, no one's really stepping up, like once every so often it is Dylan Brown, once every so often it is Mitch Moses, it's just, it's like almost, it's almost either one or the other, it's never both, but what happens when they finally do click and have a 12-week sustained period where they're kicking ass sort of thing. I guess we did see that in 2022, but it hasn't been there for a good solid year, in my opinion. Even in 2022, there are still spits and spurts. But anyway, uh, looking for a big game from Dylan Brown, to be honest with you. Um, he's experienced enough now, and he doesn't very, he very rarely plays at halfback, but he's experienced enough now. He is a leader. He is on a huge deal, um, and he needs to, needs to step up, I think, this Sunday. 
but I'm going to take the Canberra Raiders uh, to win this game 1-12, to but it's going to be a corker. Yo, thank you very much, guys, for the continuous support. Hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you enjoyed your Easter long weekend. Enjoy the footy this weekend, and I hope your team wins, except for the Gold Coast Titans, and I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you. Take care. Adios.